Hello and welcome to day 51 of our devotional study. Let's start with a moment of prayer. Most gracious Father, we come before you thanking you, God, for this day. Thanking you, Lord God, that you are the great I am and that you have all of our lives in the palm of your hand. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you are God all by yourself, that you are sovereign and in control and neither need permission nor instruction of how to manage and guide our lives. And Father, all we have to do is obey and follow. And so Father, we ask that on today that you give us insight, wisdom, understanding, and revelation so that we may do our part as you continue to do yours. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. And praise God. We are still with our reading. We're in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 1 through verse 59. <clears throat> and then we are in Mark chapter 5, verse 21 through chapter 6, verse 6. So our lesson for today comes from actually our reading uh, in Mark. So as you're reading today, you will hear this story again. You will revisit it again. And my prayer is that when you read it for the second time, that you'll have a better understanding than how I'm given to you the first time. Amen. So here we are where Jesus is in Capernaum. And this is where he did most of his ministry. His ministry was was grounded and, and seen here. He he did the, the miracle with raising um, the dead girl back to life where he said she is not dead. She's just sleeping. And he, and, and he, he did a miracle there. The woman with the issue of blood that, that was trying to, uh, went to doctors and went to all these different people and her problem could not be cured until she touched the hem of the garment of Jesus. Much of his ministry was done here in Capernaum. And so as he continued to travel, he went back to his hometown, Nazareth. And as he got there and spoke with the with the understanding, um, with the wisdom that the father had given him to speak to, to the people, people in his own hometown uh, kind of frowned upon him and was like, you know, who is, isn't this so-and-so's son? Isn't, isn't this the carpenter's? Son, I mean, who who does he think he is? He's talking as if he knows some stuff. He he's doing things. He's speaking with authority. Don't don't we didn't we visit his family? Don't we see his family down the street? Just just completely rejected who he was so much so that he could not even perform miracles there because they would not believe. He said, if you only believe. And they had a hard time doing that. So Jesus paints a picture for us. He, he paints a picture for us. It, it's not that he is doing this and then you're looking like, you know, what am I supposed to do with this? This is what he's, everything that Jesus did was an example for us to receive. If only you believe. If only you can see what it is and then you can see what he's doing for you and then understand what is going on. In all thy getting, get an understanding. So here we are, here we are, and we have had our lives radically changed by an encounter with Christ and then the Holy Spirit that has been activated in us and that lives and, and we have our very being through the Holy Spirit, and you go to your friends and your family and they laugh at you and they mock you. Aren't you so-and-so's baby? And who do you think you are? And aren't you the same home girl, home boy that used to do all these things with me just last year. And so now all of a sudden, since you in church and everything, now you a different person. You want me to believe 
that all of a sudden you have been changed. You are a new creature in Christ. You want me to believe all of that? Jesus says the ones that knew him, the ones that watched him grow up, the ones that 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 saw, that saw, that knew his family, that that may have visited his his house, and the ones the ones that had a had a constant interaction with him, you would think those are the ones that would be the most proud, the most proud to see that they were they were living next door to the Messiah. You would think that the ones that see him on a daily basis would be the most proud to, to receive whatever he has to say because they, they grew up with him. But the Bible says they are the very ones, they are the very ones that turn their backs on Jesus. So if your family is accepting the new you, praise God, you are privileged. Praise God, it is wonderful. But if your family <clears throat> and your friends are having a hard time accepting the new you, welcome to being a follower of Christ. If his own family, if his own community did not receive him, and he says, if you are persecuted, you will be persecuted because of me. But he said, faint not, for I have overcome the world. Persecution is not always about what we think of some extreme uh, example of being persecuted. Persecuted could just be you walk into the house and you say, um, praise the Lord, mom, I had a good day. Mom was like, girl, we're not even in church. You ain't got to say all of that. That's persecution. If you sitting there and you're praying over your food and your little brother, or sister's like, golly, can we eat already? That's persecution. If you go out to your friends and your friends are like, hey, you know, what you doing this weekend? You're like, no, well, we have a, a function at the church going on. I'm going, you always in church. That's persecution. But the Bible says to faint not, do not grow weary in your well-doing. For when the Lord comes back, you will receive your eternal reward. Those that diligently, diligently seek the Lord, there is a reward. There is a reward for you. There are blessings of him, of knowing him that are laid up just for you. So take heart. When you are persecuted, take heart, take heart, knowing that what you are experiencing, the Lord has experienced. I was listening to something just a few moments ago, and it's the, the preacher was saying that when when you are given advice or counsel, you are receiving this information on sale for what they pay a high cost in pain and suffering to obtain. So Christ has given you some advice. Fear not when you are persecuted in my name because I died, I was crucified, and I was beaten to give you this revelation. I was nailed to a cross I was betrayed by my closest friends. My family wouldn't even understand. I wouldn't even respect who I was at that time to them. My entire community rejected me. I did all of that. I went through all of that to give you a bit of advice to encourage you. That is okay. Whatever advice you receive, Whatever advice is given unto you is a sales, is a sale price, is a discount, is a almost free. All because of the one that gave it to you. All the suffering that they had to go through, the high cost 
that they paid to give it to you for free. So my prayer for you today is that you will go forth and be who God called you to be and understand that whatever you go through, you are already warned. And God says, I have already overcome the world. Just do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Most gracious Father, we thank you once again, God, for being the Alpha and the Omega of all things. We thank you, Lord God, for your strength and knowing, Lord God, that we can do all things through Christ because Christ did all things. Father, we thank you for the relationship that we have. And Father, we just ask that you will, Lord God, give us the grace that as we are spreading the good news of you, that even if our family rejects us, to turn our confidence towards you, to turn our hope to you, that we may do what you have called us to do in the time that you have given us to do it, to those that you have put in front of us to talk to, and let your name be glorified in our lives both now and forevermore. Father, we bless you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Be encouraged. The Lord is on your side. Amen.